You're looking to do a lot with a little bit of money. We're going to look at the Geekom A5 2025 edition and there's a couple different flavors, but we've got the least expensive option. It's like 279 bucks right now. I normally don't cover price just because that prices fluctuate and I'm going to have links down in the description so you can check the current price, but I'm just saying right now it's 279 bucks. We're going to talk about what you get for that and we're going to talk about who this is good for. 279 is maybe all you need for a system that can do your office work, whatever other tasks, even 4K editing, which I'll try on this for like your office work editing but doing some like gaming or whatever light like gaming old school gaming if you if you want um maybe some new titles but not many because it's got the radeon vega graphics not the crazy 780m or the 680m but you know what do you expect for this price i mean all right let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got right here First off, this is little, 49.2 millimeters tall, 112 by 117 millimeters when it comes to the, the square, and it's not quite a full square. And then on the inside, we have a metal frame that can support up to 200 kilograms. That's most Americans, some Americans. The CPU on this is the AMD Ryzen 5 7430U, and that one's six cores, 12 threads. They're all the big cores. 4.3 turbo, 2.3 is the regular clock speed. Uh, you can also get this in the fancier Ryzen 7 variety if you want with the Ryzen 7 5825U. Now that one's a, you know, older generation right there, but that does give you eight physical cores and 16 threads. We also have the Radeon RX Vega 7 graphics and we'll do a bunch of tests with some different games and stuff. We got DDR4 in this. This is all just stuff that keeps the price low, but I think a lot of people are not gonna notice that much depending on what they're doing. 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory running at 3200 megahertz the ssd 512 gigabyte and it's pci express gen 3 by 4 you can see 3199 right here on the read and 23 let's call it 2310 on the right uh 4k uh, average to middle in i guess and then we'll go over here and take a look at the iops and again, exactly what I would expect if I looked at a sheet and said PCI Express Gen 3 by The one thing I really like is the fact that the temperature never got above 71. Stayed in the 60s mostly, and then just peaked to 71 right over here during the right. For the wireless connectivity, we've got uh, we got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5. Point. We got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. Before we go through the ports, I actually want to take the bottom panel off and show you what's going on under the hood. It's really, really easy to open it up and make changes. You just, there's four screws, the right where the feet are, you just take those out and the bottom comes off and now we have access to all of the hard drives and the RAM and everything else. So if you wanted to swap that out, the M.2 and the RAM, it's all branded Wadposit, which is a very large brand from China. You're going to be seeing a lot of Wadposit stuff, I think, in the future. Just get used to that brand name. You're going to see it a lot. We also have an extra spot right there for a 2242 size M.2. And speaking of expansion, see that ribbon cable? That goes over to the bottom side of the case. And right there, we have a slot where you can mount a 2.5 inch drive. Just a basic SATA connector right there. And then you can also see we have a little thermal pad there that when you put the case back together, it goes right on top of the M.2 to keep it nice and cool. Also, if you notice by the USB, those have some big fat capacitors. Those are 150 microfarad tantalum capacitors. Then when it comes to the CPU and the system power, we have a three plus four phase power design. On the CPU, we have three 330 microfarad tantalum capacitors. And then on the system power, we have four 150 microfarad tantalum capacitors. So the engineers over at Geekom have gone way beyond what's expected for these things. And the quality of the components also means that this should last longer than a lot of the other stuff out there. So I'm going to be doing a video just talking about build quality. We'll be looking at some other Geekom devices and that even some less expensive devices that still have a lot of the same high quality components so stay tuned for that video coming up very soon so just know that when you get one of these they have uh, pretty much the best build quality out of any of the mini pcs that i've looked at all right let's take a look at all the ports on the front we've got two usb 3.2 gen 2 plenty fast i might add i forgot how fast usb 3.2 gen 2 was until i hooked up a hub, hub and tried to run 30 things at the same time and it didn't even sneeze uh, beside that we've got a 3.5 inch combo headphone jack and then we have a power button flipping it around to the back you got your dc jack and then we've got you see there's a usb c on both sides they're both usb 3.2 gen 2 type c and beneath both of those we have hdmi 2.0 ports now the usb 3.2 gen 2 can both be used as display port giving you four monitors in total beside that we've got a 2.5 gigabit uh, rj45 lan port then we have usb 3.2 again and then a usb 2.0 so it's kind of cool that they have 2.5 gigabit ethernet on this. At this price point, that's, that's kind of awesome. Four monitors with something this small, good for signage computers and whatever else. The cooling on this, you know, a lot of these mini PCs, I'm kind of whatever about the cooling, but I'm going to talk about their marketing that they use here for their cooling. They call it the Ice Blast 2.0. Yeah, cool. They they get some, the marketing team gets a pat on the back for Ice Blast 2.0. They're not actually blasting ice in there. I didn't know if you knew that, <laughs> but ice 
is something they used to conjure up coldness. This does a very good job. It keeps it way cooler than I expected. So I went and took a nap and had dinner and came back. I've been letting this run for a very long time and that's because it's actually not getting warm at all. 62 degrees at 64 was the, the maximum. That's, that's ridiculous. Like that's the lowest I think I've ever seen on one of these mini PCs. Also, I can't hear this. So, so this is just at my desk. All right, now let's see how loud it gets. All right, and this is how loud it is when I hold the sound level meter like right up to the side of the case. Like you'll hear it spin up a little bit when you first start doing something, but while it's actually doing it, it kind of calms down and it, it doesn't, it's like one of the quietest mini PCs I've ever heard. So yeah, good job on this. One of the nice things about making these videos is I get to recommend some games. And though this is not going to be playing your like AAA, uh, 3D first person games and all that, like no Doom in the Dark Ages. So let's talk about some stuff you can play. Rise of Industry 2 is upon us. Now, if you ever played like a city builder game and thought, you know, I would like this if there was maybe more micromanaging, if it was a little bit nerdier, and if it was set in the 80s and all about crazy, you know, business mogul stuff. Red tape. Oh, they'll tell you it's for health and safety, environmental protection, insider trading. But at the end of the day, all it adds up to is a stack of paperwork, which got me thinking, who's making the paper these things are printed on? And who's making the desk they sit on for months without getting read? I'll tell you who, you are. Well, that's what this game is. Getting through the first like tutorial walkthrough is rough. It's like an hour of just straight up information. It's not fun. The, the, the tutorial is is grueling and it's something that I think is going to stop a lot of players. But once you get through that and start to get the hang of things, then I think it can be quite a bit of fun. So the point here is to, you know, create an industry and then do something. But when you're you know, like creating an industry, you have to do everything. Like if you want to make uh, uh, something that's made out of plastic, well, you're going to have to go and dig into the ground and get the the oil out of the ground so you can refine that into plastic so you need you can if you have like excess oil or something you can set up a contract so that you're selling your excess oil and making some money there so to pay your employees or whatever if you have ever played like city skylines or something and thought you know i'd really like to just focus on one business and make it way nerdier and a lot more micromanaging then this is probably the game for you if you don't like a lot of micromanaging and you don't care about how like stuff is made and you just want to like chill and play a more casual game probably not the game for you and if you're looking for a racing game check out slipstream i've recommended this a couple times but it's just simple and fun and reminds me of the old you know 80s 90s arcade racing games from sega and namco and everything so check it out there's a lot of drifting as well music's great and it was made by a member of the community who went on to make indie games they also designed a bunch of our shirts, so yeah, say hi to them. So I'll put links to these. They both run beautifully on this system. So I'll put links to these below. They both run beautifully on this system. So we found the limit, and that's the modern Unreal Engine games like this. So we're getting just about 30 FPS here on the Midnight Walk. It's playable because it's not really an action Twitch game, but I don't know, it's dropping below 30 too often on the low setting here. Light. There we go. It is a beautiful game. Even on the low settings, it's a very beautiful game. But it's kind of cool to see that as soon as you start to prioritize style and art direction, instead of just graphical fidelity and a million different effects, you can get better frame rates, even on hardware like this, on these integrated Radeon GPUs that are not really designed for extremely crazy gaming, but it can still, you know, get the job done. All right, so I just got this game, and instead of playing it, I've only been able to test it a few times, but this is a fast-paced, bunny hop loving game. This is old school. Uh, the movement kind of reminds me of Xenotic, if you've ever played that. So look at all the gore and viscera. I gotta get the uh, key for that. Watch out, watch, what are you doing? There we go, got you right in the eyes. So Viscera Fest is a ton of fun and it works just fine on this machine. Indie games and you know, like old school games, just games that are stylized or whatever, have some art direction and not like a gazillion effects will work just fine. Unigen Valley, 1080p on the high setting. We got a score of 1184, FPS 28.3, minimum 15.9. Let's have a look at Geekbench. Our single core score is 1919. Our multi-core score is 6517. Scroll on down here, get our details, see our six cores hanging out right there. And then I'll scroll down so you can see all the individual tests. When you look at the OpenCL performance, we've got 14043. And I'll scroll down and let you see all the individual tests. 
All right, so let's check out superposition running at 1080p on medium. 2104 is our score, 15.74 is the average. You can see all the other results right there. All right, let's see how this stacks up when it comes to Cinebench. Our single core score is 1145, and you can see where it stacks up right there, just below the 9880H CPU from Intel, that's the i9, and slightly slower than a 7700K on single core performance. I think a lot of us had one of those, right? Moving over to the multi-core performance, and we are at 5775. Uh, again, six cores, 12 threads, so not as many threads as a lot of these on here, especially not this thread ripper. But again, it's really close to the same speed, maybe a little bit slower than a 7700K. All right, let's try some 4K editing right here. This is scrubbing around on the timeline. Seems to work all right up here, scrub around up here. Now this is at half resolution, so I always edit at half resolution because I don't need 4K in this tiny little square, but let's put it on 4K. Press play. Skip over here, press play. Skipping around is largely going to be uh, up to the speed of the M.2. And, you know, Gen 3 by 4 is going to be fine for skipping around in 4K. And we'll try a cross dissolve and see how that looks. All right, let's see what we got here. Look at that. No stuttering during the cross dissolve. Let's make it longer. Let's make it a little bit more difficult. I don't know if the six core is going to have trouble with that, but you know, even even my crazy computer has some trouble with cross dissolves here and there, but playing back at full cross dissolve, no stuttering whatsoever, buttery smooth. So that's very impressive. You can absolutely edit 4K video on this without issue. All right, so there you have it. Really good price to performance ratio. If you're looking for something under the $300 price point, I think this is something you might want to consider if you don't care about crazy gaming. Because just above the $300 price point, I have seen some computers um, in like the 340, 350 price range. I have seen some computers with the 680M and you can also look for like used computers with the 780M if you want something small. I mean, even even Geekcom makes some and you could probably find them, I don't know, like from last generation or whatever. So if you need lots of gaming performance, 780M or 680M is way better, like 10 times better. But if you just wanna play your old indie games, um, maybe some games that are not too demanding and do your office work, do your 4K editing and stuff, then this can be just fine. It's probably more than most people need, as a matter of fact, depending on what you're doing with your system. So since you're still here, let's give you a deal. Head over to epicpants.com. We've got half price going on right now at checkout with the coupon code Happy Mouse. So just grab this one. We don't have too many of these left, as a matter of fact. Uh, also, I've got two of these left and uh, I'll put these on sale too. But these are like the highest quality messenger bags ever. And then we've got a bunch of shirts and stuff. And some stuff I've got on the shelf. Oh, sold all the Windows copies. But yeah, a few things sitting around here on the shelf. Want to get rid of? Sold out. I've got, I've found another box. These are coming back. I'll put them on the store. Anyway, head over to epicpants.com and I'll see you in the comments. <laughs> Thank you.